So when I first got out into the real world, something unacceptable happened to me. And it's because I didn't know about the things you're about to learn in this video. We'll get into the unacceptable thing that happened to me later on in the video. But for now, if you're a young adult, and you're about to get out on your own for the first time, you're in for a very, very rude awakening unless you learn these basic finance skills that I'm about to teach you in this video. And I have no idea why the school system or even parents don't talk to young adults about this earlier on in life. But anyways, here's my advice to the 18 year olds and the young adults out there. So first off, let's talk life after high school because that's honestly where most of the financial mistakes start. So this is where you're very young and you're expected to know exactly what you wanna do, what your career path is gonna be, and essentially what your college major is going to be. And I was one of the kids who was pushed to go to college. Therefore, I pushed myself to go to college. The problem with this isn't college itself, but the cost of college. And the very people who are pushing you to go to college are very quick to say, oh, just take out a loan as the only way of affording the way to go to college. And it sounds like a good idea at the time because you're told, hey, borrow money now so you can go to college now, but then they'll nonchalantly slip in there, but you'll have to pay it back later though. But that's okay though, right? I mean, after all, by the time you graduate, you'll have a job secured that has a big enough salary to take care of those loan payments, right? Wrong. All right, let me break this down for you real quick. How does it make sense to take out $60,000 worth of student loans only to get a $45,000 salary in return when you graduate? And keep in mind, this salary is before taxes. So realistically, if you're making $45,000 a year, you're only really taking home about $30,000 a year. All right, then you have bills, food, transportation, furniture. These are your necessities. Okay, so now you might be able to pay the minimum payments on your student loans. So tell me this, how long do you think it's gonna take for you to pay off that $60,000 in loans? And here's another thing, see, I'm getting fired up because the fact that nobody describes the difference between subsidized loans and unsubsidized loans, even though they're pushing you in the direction to go out there and get a loan, is completely unacceptable. And no, that's not the unacceptable thing that happened to me, I just had to throw that in there. So here you are, 17, 18 years old, taking out all kinds of loans and you don't even realize what interest on which loans are accumulating immediately and which ones are already being paid by the federal government until you graduate. Wouldn't you wanna know that? I, I would wanna know that. These things should be discussed well before your last year of high school. These things need to be starting the beginning, like your freshman year of high school. That's when the discussions need to start. They're not happening soon enough. That's my issue. My advice, learn about student loans, understand interest rates, and look into what your field pays entry-level workers just outside of graduation. That way you can determine just how much you wanna take out in loans so that you're not drowning in debt upon graduation. And of course, there's other paths outside of graduation, such as the military, trade school, or community college, but university tends to be the biggest the biggest financial mistake that a lot of young people make. And it's because the vast majority are pushed to go to college. And along the same lines, you have credit cards, which are very important to have and they have tons of benefits. I even have a video specific to just credit cards. Check it out. Here's the thing. How many adults do you know who are in debt? Exactly. How many videos are out there on YouTube alone about getting out of debt? How many people are seeking to get out of debt? Okay, okay, last question. What do you think most people are in debt for? You guessed it. So think about this. There wouldn't be a need for all of this content if people would only educate themselves about these things before going all out on credit cards. And honestly, it takes a very simple conversation to have early in life to prevent most of these issues. My advice? When you're getting your first credit card, understand what it really means to build credit. Make it easy on yourself by actually buying things that you have the money for right now and paying it off immediately. Examples would be a candy bar, a gallon of milk, gas, etc. And again, really understand what the interest rate means. Did you know the interest rate on your credit card balance continues to be applied unless you fully pay off whatever it is that you bought? Most people don't. 
So for those of you who need an example, I'm one of those people who needs an example. I'm going to show you one right now. I'm going to do some quick math, so bear with me. I'm going to use some pretty easy numbers for simple math. So, so let's say you have $1,000 in your credit card balance, which means you spent $1,000 on something or multiple things. Let's say you have a $25 minimum payment per month on said balance. And let's say your interest rate is 20% per year. So of course, $1,000 minus that $25 payment is $975. So at 20% per year, you're gonna divide by 12 to represent the monthly interest rate, which is roughly 1.6%. Just keep in mind, 1.6% of 975 is $15.60. Okay, so 975 plus $15.60 will leave you with roughly $990 in your balance. So even though you paid $25, it's really as if you only paid $10 on that payment, which is why you shouldn't just pay the minimum payment. You should pay over. You should aim to fully pay it off or mostly pay it off to where the interest rate has minimal impact. And as you build credit, you will have opportunities to move to credit cards with much, much lower interest rates, but it's up to you to be on the lookout for those. And once you do move to a credit card with a much lower interest rate, just repeat the steps that I talked about earlier in terms of just buying stuff that you can pay for right now and continue to build that credit. Not only will your credit score be high, but you won't be like most of the people out here who are drowning in consumer credit card debt. The key thing here is don't spend money you don't have. Which brings me to my next point, learn how to budget. Oh my gosh, learn how to budget. This will actually keep you from spending money that you don't have. The two budgets that I would recommend is one, the zero base budget, and two, the 50, 30, 20 budget. To quickly go into this, a zero base budget is very simple. All your expenses every month have money assigned to them before you even get paid. And any money you have left over goes towards debt, donations, savings, or investing. But the bottom line is those have money assigned to them too. So the number that you make per month should be zero at the end of the month once they're assigned to all these different expenses and different goals. So the idea is that your money every single month goes somewhere. And don't think that it means you're gonna have zero dollars at the end of the month. It doesn't mean that it means the money left over, if you have, let's say, $200 left over at the end of the month, it goes straight into savings. It goes straight into debt, to give it away. Like whatever, you, the money is yours, basically. If you have extra money that you wanna to dedicate to your checking account, leave it in your checking account. You see what I'm saying? It's not gonna be zero at all. In fact, it'll make you save more money than you probably ever saved in your life. Enough rambling with that. I have an entire video about zero-based budgeting. So if you wanna learn more about that, if you're confused about my explanation here, check it out. I go way more in detail. It's like a 12 minute video all about zero-based budgeting. So check it out. And the 50, 30, 20 rule is a similar concept as well, except 50% of your money should go towards necessities. 30% should go towards your wants and 20% should go towards your needs. Again, I have a whole video on the 50, 30, 20 rule that goes way in depth that gives you examples on what needs are versus what wants are and what savings can look like and how it can be easier to save. I have so many videos about the 50, 30, 20 rule that will make your head spin. So you can check any of them out. You can even watch all of them and learn something new in each of them, but either way, Check those videos out if you don't if you're not familiar with the 50 30 20 rule and here's a pro tip a huge way to get way ahead of your budget is to analyze and understand the cost of living in whatever area you're going to be in once you start your life whether that's your college town whether that's out of state do your due diligence understand what the cost of living is like they can be drastically different in different areas, which means that the salary you make can be can mean two totally different things if you're in two totally different areas. And that's gonna help you determine if you need to have roommate or not. So that way you can put away even more money when it comes to moving to a different area. Or if you can hold your own and live by yourself. I, for one, have chosen to live by myself, but not everyone is going to be in that same exact category, especially when you consider that everyone has drastically different salaries when they start their lives. And something that I like to preach about on this channel a lot is do not rely on one stream of income. For one, it can destroy you mentally, but it can also destroy you financially. Not to mention the fact that you still have bills, debt, and necessities to pay for despite what you're going through in life. Whether you're going through a breakup, whether you just got fired, whether you just got written up, it doesn't matter. Bills are still coming and they're still due on a certain date and you better be able to pay for them. It's just, it's a cold world out there. It's ruthless. The real world, so to speak, 
It's cold. So you got to stay cold with your finances. You got to be ready. You got to get right. You got to get right with your finances, man. You got to be cold. And all that means is you got to be ready for anything and everything that comes your way. You got to be cold. And that leads me to my biggest piece of financial advice. So listen up. As soon as I stepped into the real world, one of the most unacceptable things that could happen to anyone happened to me. I had just started working fresh out of college. I was 21 years old, taking on a management position in one of the biggest, most well-known tire industries in the world. Sounds good, right? Well, at the time, it wasn't as good as it sounds. In fact, I, I hated life throughout the entire time I was there. I did what everyone said. I went to school, I got really good grades, and I got the good paying job. Yet, I immediately found myself working 80 plus hour weeks, not even a month into the job. And, and don't get me wrong, it did actually pay well. They enticed me by paying overtime for all the extra hours worked. But I hated the job, hated the environment, didn't feel supported, didn't feel happy, and I didn't feel secure. So what salary could they possibly offer you that could make all that go away? Absolutely nothing, in my opinion. And you're probably asking, Reggie, why didn't you feel secure? I'm gonna tell you why. Guys, this is a cutthroat business. It's real out there, it's hide your kids, hide your wife. I mean, it's, I'm gonna paint a picture for you. Can you imagine getting up every single day working 14 to 16 hour days, running off of four to five hours of sleep per day, working seven days a week and maybe getting one day off per month, but then getting called in on the days that you actually had off to the point where every time your phone rings, it gives you anxiety. And it's just like your mom or somebody calling. But every time it rings, you're just like, oh, is it work? <laughs> you're like, oh, is it work? Oh, okay, thank God, oh. But you never know. At any given moment, you can get called in and there's nothing you can do about it. You are that company slave. That's how I felt. And that's how it was. On top of this, I'm not done. I'm not done. On top of this, imagine getting your job threatened on an almost daily basis, despite how good of a job you're actually doing. It was a scare tactic they like to use to get the most out of you, like the most output, the highest quality. The idea was to drive you to drive the people under you to make them do more, basically. And it's a horrible, horrible tactic. I mean, getting threatened to be sent home, being threatened to be written up, being warned that if you ever make that mistake again, you better have an updated resume. I mean, it was a very anxious time for me. Keep in mind, I didn't know anything about scare tactics back then. I legitimately thought my job was on the line every single time I even thought about making a mistake. And any sign I would give, any sign at all, I would give of being frustrated or fed up, for lack of a better term, I'd get these exact words. Oh, come on, you're young, you can handle it. Besides, where are you gonna go and make this much money, huh? Where are you gonna go? And that exact quote right there put me in what I call a scarcity mindset. And since this was my only stream of income, this remained my mindset for almost two years. That is unacceptable. Taking advantage of a young person's time, taking advantage of someone's inexperience to put them on edge at all times just for them to give you a slightly better output and creating the illusion that this is the best thing that they have going for themselves right now. Basically, this is the best job you can possibly get right now for your age, for your skills, whatever. And I look back to that today and I genuinely appreciate that experience, but only because I can add value to other people's lives and I can give them valid and valuable advice so they do not have to go through what I had to go through as a young adult. First of all, my advice to you is never, ever let anybody, and I mean anybody, take advantage of you and always know your value and your worth at all times. And this actually goes much, much deeper than money. This can be applied to any area of your life. I mean, you hear all the time where people stay in relationships because they have a scarcity mindset because the other person has convinced them that I'm the best you can do. You can't do any better than this. So then they stay. Same things happen with jobs. Same things happen with marriages. Same things happen with insurance companies. I mean, I could I could go all day on this. Bottom line, don't let anybody make you think that you're worth any less than what you are. 
You're better than that. And along the same lines, you know, don't let yourself develop a scarcity mindset. And that is completely on you. And don't be closed-minded to any certain city or state. I mean, if, some, if a job or anything is making you feel like you're stuck in one area, go somewhere else. Take it from me, I literally moved across the country so that I could have a better reality that I'm more in control of, that has better financial opportunities, that has more quality people in my workspace, that allows me the time to work on my side projects, to allow me the time to work on my side income and my side businesses. I didn't have that where I was, yet I was convinced that back where I was was the best that I could do. And I was wrong in thinking that. So from now on, do you think I will ever have a scarcity mindset again? Please, please. You know what I'm saying? Get out of here with that. But the key here is, I just want y'all to make sure y'all have a good, and I mean a good work-life balance. Cause you can't just be all about work. You were born to do more than to just wake up every morning and go to work and make some money so you can pay your bills. You're meant for more than that. You have a purpose in this world and you gotta figure out what that is. I'll tell you what, it ain't working your life away. It ain't working 80 plus hours a week. Yeah, you can run around saying how you make six figures, but there's people who make that in a month who are working, <laughs> who are working less than 40 hours a week, if you can imagine that. And most importantly, and this is the biggest one because I didn't learn about this until I was way out of high school, way out of college, and I actually had to meet some very, very, very great people who took me under their wing so I could understand this concept. You ready for this? Don't rely on one stream of income. I know I mentioned that earlier, but I'm about to go in depth right now. Just imagine if you could build an income stream, right? That is just as big or bigger than the income stream right now that you're getting from your job. And if you don't have a job, just imagine what your salary is gonna be once you do get a job and just imagine having another stream of income on the side that has matched or surpassed that. So imagine having that, right? Do you think you would tolerate any BS from work? Do you think you would tolerate working crazy hours? Do you think you would tolerate a boss yelling at you, disrespecting you, taking advantage of you? Nah, you would walk out. You'd be like, you know what? I'm going full time on my business or on my side stream of income because it's clearly shown that it can match or surpass what I'm making here. And once you go full time on that, then guess what? The income doubles, the income triples, and then you're making quadruple what you were making at your job. So really that's the best thing you could have done in that case. I know people who've done it. You're a lot more secure now, you know what I'm saying? You're way more secure. You know there's not gonna be any real financial consequences because like I said, you have another income anyways. That's as big as your job. Why would you tolerate any mess? Granted, I, I would say the smartest thing to do is to keep your job and keep that side in income growing, but if you had enough, you had enough. Walk away from there, it's, be it's the best thing for your mental, physical, and financial health to walk up out of there and get you something that is worth your while to work on your business and work on yourself. You gotta do what's best for you out here. You die tomorrow, that business will have you replaced. I guarantee it, without hesitation. But the business is having a hard day, so they gotta call you in to work though, right? Doesn't work both ways. And that's honestly, guys, that's really my biggest, biggest, biggest piece of advice financially for you 18 year olds and you young adults in general. You know what I'm saying? 20 through 22 even if you're my age, 24 or, or older, some of y'all might not have known this. So I'm, I'm hoping that this is adding value to you because right now you're in a situation, right? You're in a situation where you have to ask another grown human being if you can have some time off. Some jobs are very generous with it. Like my job, extremely generous with it and they'll let you take it whenever. You know what I'm saying? It's awesome. It really is. They care about work-life balance here, but some jobs just really don't care. If they if they, if they need you, they need you. There ain't gonna be no vacation. Sorry, take the vacation anyways. You know what I'm saying? Go on that flight, you come back to a write-up. That's how it is for a lot of jobs. That's how it is. All right, all right. One more thing, and this is the last thing I promise, but this is bonus content for those of you who decided to go ahead and stick around to the end of this video. Remember earlier when I said you gotta stay cold with your money? It's not just a phrase. That doesn't mean to be stingy. That doesn't mean to be greedy. That doesn't mean to be rude or mean with it. It means to be on top of your game when it comes to money. It's another way of saying stay sharp. 
And keep in mind, once you started making a certain amount of money, there's going to be people that you attract. And there's going to be people who really, really, really want money from you. That's just how it is. It could be in the form of families, friends, you know what I'm saying? People who appear to take an interest of you, you know what I'm saying? It could be any of that stuff. But the bottom line is people are going to be asking you for money. It could be $5, $50, man, it could be $500. It could be rent money that they're asking for. But the bottom line is they're going to ask you for money and it's up to you to be sharp enough, to be smart enough, to be cold enough with your money to understand whether the answer is yes or no. And it's very simple. If you can give it to them and it doesn't matter if they pay it back or not and you won't hurt it all for it, by all means, you know what I'm saying? Give, be a good person. But that's only if that person is of value to you. That's only if that person means something to you. You don't just give your money away to people who don't even appreciate you. That's another way of people taking advantage of you. These are things you learn along the years. But also you got to think about this. If you can't give money and it, you know that, yeah, they mean something to you, you know, you care about them. But if you give them this money, you know, you're screwed if, you know, if they can't pay you back. What is the point of helping somebody with their money who is probably going to need help again? Just to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not even going to sugarcoat nothing for you guys. If they might have these same issues again and you can't even afford to give them that money, what good does it do if both of you are broke? Tell me that. What, what good does it do if both of you are broke? To me, it makes no sense. So it makes more sense to me for you to say, hey, look, I can't help you right now. I can give you this much, but I can't give you the whole thing. Or I just can't give you anything. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, love you, care about you, but I can't do that right now. I'm sorry. You have to say no sometimes. And if that person is truly your friend, is truly, you know, family to you or whatever the case is, they will have to be understanding of you because you have to help yourself before you can help anybody else. And that is probably the number one rule in finances that a lot of people don't get. They try to be too much of a good person right and they end up hurting themselves and it bites them later in life and some people might see you as cold or harsh or mean or rude but no it's understanding and valuing the money that you do have it's understanding what you can afford to give away and, and whatnot it's really it boils down to common sense if i'm completely honest about it but you can't put too much of your emotions into finances because then you make bad decisions and then you help people who it might not even work out with. You help people who might not even be able to pay you back. So I'll let you use that at your discretion. But that's the bonus content for this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. I really hope you like this video. This is probably the biggest realest video that I've ever made regarding finances and it's really going to hit home to any age group that's watching this video because I for one wish I would have learned this years and years and years ago. I'm throwing everything I wish I would have learned into one video and hopefully you guys you know like the video like the content. Stay cold.